Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are diving into a topic that's often surrounded by curiosity, mystery, and let's be honest, a lot of confusion. We are talking about the Tor browser. Now, I know most of you watching this already know what Tor is. We are not here for a surface level introduction. But just to set the stage, Tor, or short for the Onion Router, is a special browser that helps you browse the internet more anonymously. It does this by routing your traffic through a volunteer-run network of servers, bouncing it around the globe to make it really hard to track your location or activity. So, why use Tor? Well, you might be a journalist working in a repressive region, an activist, a researcher, or just someone who values online privacy. And let's be real, that's all of us these days. So, before we jump in, I want to say this up front. This video is strictly educational. I don't condone or encourage illegal activity. Tor is legal in most countries, but what you do with it can get you in a lot of trouble. So please use it responsibly. So first, I'll show you how to download the Tor browser safely, the right way, so you don't end up grabbing something shady from a fake website. Then, you go through verifying your download, which is basically a digital way of checking that what you downloaded hasn't been messed with. So think of it like a temper evident seal. Next, I'll walk you through how to install and configure Tor browser. So it's up and running smoothly on your Windows 11 system. After that, we'll take a full tour of the interface so you're not left clicking around blindly trying to figure out what everything does. And finally, I'll give you some solid security tips to help you stay anonymous and protected as possible while using Tor. So let's get right into it. This video will mainly focus on Windows 11, but that said, if you really care about privacy, I wouldn't recommend Windows at all. Windows is great for productivity, but it collects a lot of telemetry data by default. A better option, maybe try a privacy respecting OS like Linux. If you're going all out, try Tails, or the amnesic operating system that forgets everything after a reboot. But more on that in another video. So like I earlier said, Tor itself is not illegal. You're totally within your rights to use it in most countries. However, what you do while using Tor, that's a different story. Certain activities can definitely cross the line into illegal territory. So, just so we're clear, this video won't show or encourage anything illegal, nothing shady, and nothing sketchy. This is all about privacy and not piracy. So first up, downloading the Tor browser. Head over to the torproject.org. Do not download Tor browser from any third party source, ever. Now, before you click anything, pause for a sec and make sure you're actually on the real side. First, look at the address bar. You should see HTTPS at the beginning. And that S means the connection is secure. Next. Make sure there's a little padlock next to it. That's another good sign. And finally, check the spelling. It should say exactly torproject.org. No extra letters, no weird typos. Scammers love to trick people with slight misspellings like Tor Project or Tor Project. So don't fall for it. Once you're sure you're in the right place, scroll down and click Download Tor Browser. You'll see options for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and Android. So since I'm using Windows, I'll select Windows and then proceed to download the installer. Now, an important thing to note, just below the download button, you see a signature file. Make sure to download that tool. We'll use it to verify the integrity of the Tor browser you just downloaded. And this simply helps to confirm that the file wasn't tampered with or it really came from the Tor project. So now, to verify the Tor installer, and this step is optional but highly recommended, especially if you live in a region with censorship, or if you just don't want to risk downloading a corrupted or modified file. So step 1, install gpg or gpg 4 win by heading over to gp4win.org and downloading and installing the latest version of gpg 4 win During the setup, make sure you select Cleopatra as GUI key manager. Once installed, open up command prompt, not PowerShell, command prompt and run this command to import the official tool project sign-in key. Once you run the command, it will say the key was imported successfully. So next, run this command to save the key. And this will create a file called tor.kring. Now, ensuring that the installer and the signature file or the .asc file are in the same folder, use the following command to check the integrity of the package. And make sure to change file names if needed to match the current version of Tor browser which you downloaded. It might be different from the one I'm showing you right now, so make sure everything checks out. Once you run the command, if all is good, you'll get the confirmation saying good signature from Tor Browser Developer's sign-in key. And that simply means the package you downloaded has not been tampered with or modified in any way, so you're good to go. The next part is installing Tor Browser, and this is pretty straightforward if you've installed any other browser before. 
the process is pretty much the same. So just run the two browser.exe file, choose your language, choose where to install, and click install. Once done, proceed to launch the browser. When you first open Tor, you'll be greeted with a connect to Tor window. So just click connect to get started. However, if your country doesn't sense at all, the default connection is fine. But if Tor is blocked in your country, or if your ISP is acting shady, simply click on Tor network settings to set up bridges. And bridges are like secret entry points into the Tor network. They are not publicly listed, which makes them harder for governments or ISPs to block. So to use a Tor bridge, simply head over to bridges.torproject.org, click on step 2, which is get bridges, and on the following page, click just give me bridge lines. Copy the bridge lines that appear. Head back to Tor browser and under bridges, click add new bridges and paste the bridge lines. Then proceed to connect. An alternative way to get bridges is you can simply request them via email. So simply send an email to bridges at torproject.org with the line get transport or BFS4. And within minutes, they will send you bridge lines. So, just a bonus tip if you're extra paranoid, you can use a VPN before Tor, like Movad, which doesn't log your IP. Just be aware that this changes your threat model. I've covered this in more detail in another video, so you can check it out. Now, to confirm that you're connected to the Tor network, simply head over to check.torproject.org and it should say something like, Congratulations, this browser is configured to use Tor. Alright, so now let's take a quick tour of the Tor browser. So if you've used Firefox before, the layout will feel pretty familiar. But Tor comes with a few important privacy forecast features baked in. So first is the new identity. And this closes all your tabs, wipes your session, and restarts Tor. It's basically like hitting the reset button on your anonymity. And then there's a new Tor circuit for this site. And this simply changes the route your data takes through the Tor network for that specific tab without restarting the whole browser. Now, if you click on the padlock next to the URL, then hit Secure for this site, you'll get a peek under the hood. It will show you your current tour path, which usually includes three relays. The guard node, which is your entry point, the middle node, which helps obscure your trail, and the exit node, where your connection finally merges onto the internet. So each part helps protect your privacy by making it incredibly hard to trace your activity back to you. There's also the HTTPS only mode, which is enabled by default. This prevents insecure HTTP connections by default, adding an extra layer of safety. Then there's also privacy windows. I mean, every window is essentially a private session. Tor doesn't log anything, not even locally. So just to talk about basic security and privacy settings. So if you go to security settings, you'll see three levels. Standard, and this is the default, where most websites will work as expected. Safer, and this turns off JavaScript when sites that aren't using HTTPS and limit certain types of media that could be used to track you. And then the safest. This disables JavaScript completely, blocks most media, and gives you the highest level of protection. So, if you're just browsing .onion sites or doing anything sensitive, safest is usually the way to go. And another quick tip is uh, don't resize your browser window. Because, see, Tor tries to make all users look the same to reduce tracking through fingerprinting. And resizing the window makes you stick out, so make sure you don't do that. Also, don't install add-ons or extensions. Even privacy-focused ones can actually weaken your anonymity. Tor is already locked down out of the box, so there's no need to tweak it. I never log into personal accounts like Facebook, Gmail, or Instagram while using Tor, because that completely breaks your anonymity. Once you log in, you're no longer anonymous. And finally, a quick note on those two Tor features. New circuit will change the path for a specific tab or site, which is handy if something's acting weird or slow. New identity, which will reset everything. Tabs, sessions, everything. Basically giving you a clean slate. Alright, so let's quickly go over some do's and don'ts to keep you safe while using Tor. So first up, the do's. Do use privacy focus search engines like DuckDuckGo. They won't track your searches, which is exactly what you want. Do bookmark trustworthy onion links, and these are basically your go to dot onion websites. So keep them handy so you always know where to go. And finally, do keep Tor browser updated regularly. Tor gets a lot of attention from bad doctors, so 
you want to make sure you're always running the latest and most secure version. Now for the don'ts. And the first one is don't torrent over Tor. It doesn't work well and can expose your real IP. Plus, it's a huge strain on the Tor network. Second, don't enable JavaScript on sketch websites, especially if you're in standard mode, because JavaScript can actually be used to exploit vulnerabilities, so stay cautious. And finally, don't download files carelessly. If you have to download something, the best way to do it is opening it in a VM or offline. You don't want to risk running malicious software on your main system. Now, one thing I mentioned is uh, updating to a browser. And if you want to check for updates, first click on the hamburger menu. That's the three lines in the top right corner. Then head to help and click on about Tor browser. Once there, it will automatically check for updates and install them if needed. Keeping Tor browser up to date is super important. Tor is a prime target for surveillance and zero day exploits. So always make sure you're running the latest version to stay protected. All right, so that's it for today's video. Just to quickly recap, I showed you how to download Tor safely, how to verify the installer to prevent tampering, and exploit security settings and do's and don'ts. Remember, Tor is a tool and how you use it matters. Used wisely, it's one of the most powerful tools for online privacy.